What I'm gonna show you here is probably gonna save you hours each week depending on how much content you create. And with the amazing power of generative AI and no code tools, all of this is honestly pretty easy to do, which you can hopefully tell by the length of this video. So let's get started. I have this Airtable page. And in here, I've copy pasted a couple of my blog posts. And what will happen is that once you add this in here, it will generate quotes or tweets based on the content of the article. So we're not gonna go into writing actual articles, that's something for another video. But then once we have this, it creates these tweets here. And so you see one, two, three, <laughs> you see they got better over time because I was still tweaking the, the prompts and, and the whole workflow a little bit. But it makes this, we have this image here that is ready for us to be posted on, let's say Instagram. We have the content which we can just post on Twitter. And all of this was just completely automated based on the article or the blog post we had inputted. Now, I figured out how to do this for you. I've done the hard work. I've figured out which pieces of the puzzle you can puzzle together <laughs> and how to do it. And so we're gonna go into that right now. So let's start with the plan. The plan is this. We have an Airtable table where we put in all our source content. And then we add a trigger to that so that once the content is added and it's ready for generation, then we do a couple of things. First of all, we extract a quote or a tweet from it. And you can do this multiple times if you want, but for now we'll just do one, right? So extract a quote from it. Second, we generate an image prompt. Thirdly, we generate the actual image. So we use a generated prompt to generate a generated image that we will use as the background for our little code card. And then finally, we will combine the tweet or the quotes with the generated image into a cohesive image like what you're seeing here. And then we'll upload all of that back to Airtable and then you're free to do what you want. You can go through some kind of approval process because you probably want to review it. You can schedule it on the calendar and you can use the Airtable integrations to go and actually post it online. We're not going to go into those details. We're really going to focus on the generation right now. So are you ready? Let's go. So let's start by creating a new base in Airtable so that we have a blank slate to start from. I'll click create base. I want to start from scratch and oh, it's changing these colors everywhere. Okay, I do not want any of your getting started stuff. Go away, I know what to do here. So table one, let's let's rename this, we call this articles. So we have an article name, that's fine. We don't want any notes. Actually, we do want a text field. So we already have it here. So let's call this uh, content. Cool, we don't need an assignee. Of course, like when you're doing this, extend this so it works with your team or, or your, your, your approval flow or whatever, but we'll just focus on the basics that are everything that's necessary for the generation. So you have status. This actually I do wanna have. So well, let's say default option to do. In progress, I want this to have a state ready for generation. And I will add one generated. The reason I'm doing this is to make sure that it's to prevent it from accidentally generating new ones. I don't want it to continue in the loop and generate over and over and over again. So let's save this. There we go. Another field we will need is the last modified time one because make, which is the integration we'll use, it actually listens to when the thing has changed and it needs this time field to understand when did one of my records change. So field name, yeah, it's optional. Last modified, perfect. So, okay, let's go and let's go to my website and let's go pick a blog. So let's see, we, we have something to work with, right? Who are you writing your goals for? That's great. I'll just copy paste this. Uh, oh yeah, that's the one. I'll paste the content in here. Who are you? goals for, and we set the status to, let's already put it ready for generation. We will delete these other two articles. Okay, so now we got this data ready. Now, we want this generated code cards to end up in a different table so that we have one or multiple code cards related to the same article. 
That way it's easy for us to track, it's easy for us to know when something need, is updated or when they're posted and we can delete ones, add new ones as much as we want. So let's click add, create a new blank table and let's call it code cards. There we go. <clears throat> we have a name, so the actual content will be, let's call this the quote. All right, assign e, delete this, status, you know, we can keep this, let's let's put it in to do for now so that you have your little flow afterwards. Let's delete those empty ones. Okay, so what else do we want? We want a link to our article. So let's call it, yeah, already perfect article. I do not want any lookup fields. Uh, actually, I only want it to be one, so, right? Because our code quarter is related to one article. So let's rename this to article. Okay, so what do you have? We have the name, which is just, we will need to fill in something. We have the actual quote, we have the status, we have the article, and now we're gonna add the fields that we're actually gonna generate. So we might just keep the final image, but I like to have all the data in between to kind of see what's happening there. So we have the quote, what else do we have? We have an attachment, attachment for the background image, right? So we'll have the background image and then we'll stick the quote on top of it, which will generate a final image. So let's call this final image. There we go. Cool, so we got everything set up and ready to go. So let's hop over to make. Let's log in here, platform. And we go to scenarios. You'll see this is the one I just created to test this out, but we're gonna create one together. Cool. So social code card generator. Let's add this. What do we want? We want this to start when a record in Airtable is modified. So as we're editing it, when we change the status to ready for generation, I want this to create the new generation and then stop. So let's go Airtable. Watch records. This is the one that starts with the input. I already set up all the connections to all the tools we're gonna need. Though it's pretty straightforward, just go to the help documentation of each of those connections and set it up. It doesn't make sense for me to go into those details in this type of video, okay? So let's go to bait. Oh, I don't think we named our base, whatever. <laughs> Untitled base, that's the one. So we want this to trigger on these articles. There we go. Trigger field, this is the last modified one. So the help documentation is there. And the label is, let's just use name, cool. I will add a formula here, so that says status equals ready for generation. I will double check, uh, no. I do want to double check if it's, if the casing is right, ready for generation. Okay, so it's exactly the same. Let's double check this here. I, I didn't save it, so let's have to do it again. Table. Articles, trigger field, last modified, label field, name, formula, status is ready for generation. That's the one. Okay, <clears throat> cool. Now, if you remember the steps were regenerating the quote, we generate the prompt, we generate the background image, and then we generate the entire code card, and then we add it back to Airtable. So let's start with generating the quote. So for that, we'll use OpenAI integration here. And I want to create a completion. Okay, the model, let's use GPT 3.5 Turbo. It's fast and it's cheap. So in here we have to add the messages, right? It's like ChatGPT, but in an automation. So we'll have to send it a message. So we'll click add item. The role is who is sending a message, that's the user, right? And so the content is, okay, use the following wing article, let's call it blog article, to create a, a quote that is interesting and mind-blowing. Article title, let's put in the name here. Article content, and that's the content. And now we'll just add dash 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 because ChatGPT likes it when you clearly delineate things in the article content. The article can be pretty long, so let's do 
I'll do quote colon, because if I do this, then it will be kind of in its auto completion mode, which helps make the type of return a bit more structured. I don't want it to return anything like, oh sure, here's your quote, right? I just want the quote. So that's why I do quote colon, and that's gonna prompt it to give me just exactly the quote, exactly what I want. So let's click OK here. There we go. I will rename this because we will have two open AI ones and it'll be a bit confusing. Generate quote. All right. And now we do another one. And this one it will be for generating the prompt. So we'll do this. We'll add a message just like before. User message. Okay. Use the following article to generate a prompt for stable diffusion. Now, here's the thing. ChatGPT only has data until 2021 and stable diffusion did not exist at that point yet. So that's a bit of a problem because it kind of doesn't really know how to create good prompts. That means that we have to explain to ChatGPT how to create those prompts. I've worked on this when I was trying this out, so I will just copy paste that. So it says, Stable Diffusion is an image generation model that takes a detailed list of keywords as a prompt to generate an appropriate image. Return a single prompt that generates a background photo fitting for the given article content and specific to the tweet given. I'll call it quote, I had to call it tweet before. Include the subject, environment, image, style, and feeling. So article content, oops. Uh, we all need to redo this because now it's changed. Content, there we go. And then we have the actual quote. And now, so what we use here is we want the output of this generate quote one. So it'll return choices. It'll like, usually you only want one choice. You can set it up to generate multiple choices, but we just want one. So we want one, the first choice and the message, and we want the content of the message. So let's click this. And now it's gonna give us like a little input field here. Like which of the choices do you want? I want the first one, so it's gonna be one. So we have quote column, and then at the end, prompt. Let's let's do this stable diffusion prompt so it doesn't get confused. And click OK. So I'll rename this one. Generate SD prompt. OK. Cool. We're getting there, right? Well, it's halfway done already. You see, like it's it's insane how how quickly how quickly you can make stuff like this. Of course, I figured out how to do it, and that's why we can do it so quickly. OK. Now we're gonna need another application to actually generate this background image. So the one that I like is called Eden, Eden AI. Eden AI is pretty cool because it has a bunch of things it can do. Actually, you can use GPT-3 through Eden if you would like and if you just want to have like one thing over and over again. But in this case, we'll just use the image. So it says D -d 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 generate an image from text. This is the one I want. And the text prompt is, Here's like a little, the prompting again, it gets a bit difficult. So I will start by saying background image so that it doesn't become too complicated. And then we have this generate SD prompt. Again, we will go choices, message, content. This is the one, I, this is the one I want. And we want the first choice. Cool. Now, after that, I like adding a couple of keywords that help stable diffusion just improve the general quality of the photo. So things like masterpiece, UHD, award winner. What else can we do? Highly detailed, oh, detailed, uh, shallow depth of fields, bokeh. There's one more thing that I want to do here because one of the errors I noticed when I was trying this out is that when you're generating the image, it doesn't want a prompt that's too long. So sometimes ChatGPT can create a long prompt, especially for just adding stuff like this here. So what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna do this very simply. We're just gonna cut off everything that's too long. So the way we can do that is using one of the functions that's built in to make here. So if you have the A1, you see functions, the one that we want is substring. And so substring, this is gonna take, first we have our actual text. Oops. Let's cut this, put it inside the substring. And then we start it. So we start from zero, which is all the way at the beginning. And we want it to be a thousand. That's gonna be the maximum length. So this is gonna give you like, this is just gonna cut off the these words if they're too long. 
all right? Resolution, 512 by 512, that's fine. And let's use Stability AI. Number of images, we just want one. So let's click OK here. And now we have our image generation set up. Automated image generation from an article. Are you liking it so far? I hope so, I hope so. So let's, let's, let's continue. What we're gonna do now is we will add another module and actually, it's just slipping my mind. What I want to use here is called Placid. And now Placid, let's go to the application. I guess it's this button. Yeah, so you have playgrounds. And so what Placid lets you do is, we'll do create template here. It lets you create a template and then afterwards you change the text or you change the images, which is exactly what we want to do. So let's pick one. I really want to quote one. So let's do tags, quotes. There we go. There we go. Yeah, this one, like a cool uh, workout type one. Okay, so this one is called motivational. You can change the text if you want, of course. And so what you'll see here is that we have a bunch of layers. We have the IMG, which is the background. It's already, you see this thing is like a rotating image, which means that it's dynamic. That means that we can change it afterwards. You can just turn this on or off, right? We have the image, we have the URL, which is a top word, actually. Let's just delete that for now uh, or hide it. There we go. And then we have the actual title. All right, so we'll save this. And then we'll go back to make and we'll do Placid. Let's add the application here and I want to create an image. All right, template, motivational, that's the one we just created. And uh, what do I want to do? Transparent, I don't care. Image, so here I want to put the URL of the image I want to use as a background. So we'll scroll here to Eden AI, we'll check the results. It has items and an image URL. So in this case, we only have one result. So we want the first one. We only have one image generated. So we take the first one and now we have the image URL. Okay. URL, I don't care, we just hit that one. And then we have the title. So we now put in the text and that's gonna be our quote, right? So we go here, generate quotes, choices, message, content, and we want the first choice. Press okay. And now we have all of this set up. All right, so this is the point where we generated everything that we needed, right? We had the input data, we generated the quote, we generated the prompt, we generated the background image, we generated the quote card. And now it's just time to put everything back into Airtable. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll click the plus here. We go Airtable, I want to create a record. I want to use my <laughs> untitled base and I want to add it to the quote cards table. All right, so the name, let's figure out a name. I will just do it based on the actual article. So we have this watch records, which is the, the input one. So we do name and I'll add a dash to the, I want some kind of ID. So let's do the quote ID. So that if we generate multiple quotes for the same thing, it has a different name because the name needs to be different for every item in that table. Okay, so quote, that's when we scroll to our generate quote prompt. So we do choices, message, contents, and it's the first one, just like we've done multiple times before. Status, I'll just keep it on the default. Now we link to the article, so it has record ID. So let's click in here, and the article is the Airtable input one. So we click ID here. Background image, this is the one that we were just using from Eden. So results, items, image URL, and we would just do the oh, first item, there we go. And then final image will be the result from our Placid. So that this says image URL, that's easy. And then we click okay. Now, one last thing I want to do is that I don't want this to loop over and over and over and generate images when we don't want it to generate because that's gonna get pretty expensive if it never stops. So I will add one more module for our table and I will update the records. So what I want to do is change the status of the input record of the article so that it says generated and that way it won't restart it because at the beginning if you remember we filtered on the status should be ready for generation right so we'll go base untitled base table articles which one do we want to update 
the one in watch records here, so ID, there we go. The only thing I want to update is the status and I just want to change it to generated. Okay, there we go, that's it. So, well, let's try it out. I'll click run once and see if I've made any mistakes because on camera you usually <laughs> make mistakes. All right, so it generated a quote for us. It generated a prompt for us. Now it's doing the image, that's done. Now it's combining those. Plus it takes a while and it updated the two fields. So let's go and check out our Airtable. Cool, so it changes this to generated status, that's cool. And if you go to our quote cards, there is one. So let's expand this and see what it has. There's this guy standing, all right. So there's a watermark here. So you see the prompting can be much improved, but that's a topic for another video. Yeah, let's see. The reason most of us are unhappy is because we set our goals for the person we are instead of the person we want to become. Our goal should be a reflection of our future self, not our current self. There we go. That's it. It's done. <laughs> so, yeah. I hope you liked this. I hope this wasn't too overwhelming for you. There's a little bit more setup needed for the connections and everything, but it's pretty straightforward. So this was one thing, and I hope you see that how much time you can save with this automation. Now, imagine you had two or five or 10 of these running at the same time, how much time you could save each week in your business. Like, it's absolutely incredible once you start combining AI and other high-tech tools in your business. So I teach this. Every week we sit together with a bunch of people and we learn about this, we learn from each other and or I teach some specific use cases because it's always interesting to see what other people are working on and their specific use cases or how to adapt it for their way of working. So check out the description for information on how to join that. I also do webinars once in a while that go much more deeper into specific things and we can have some kind of nice interaction. So I hope to see you around and yeah, like the video if you didn't yet and if you like this, because if you're here, you probably liked it. And then subscribe to make sure that YouTube keeps showing you stuff of me. Thank you for watching and see you later.